Hey, what's up guys? Captain Jack here, and welcome back to another episode of ATS Life on the Road. Uh, today's episode, I found us a pretty awesome little journey. Um, I decided to find a journey beforehand, because I didn't want to take something rubbish. And luckily, it was where we left off last time in Kamloops, this one starts there. And it's this really awesome little yacht, which looks pretty cool, I thought. And it, it's a good length journey, it's not going to be too ridiculously long good bit of cash so um yeah i like the look of it i thought we'll go with that um as you can probably hear by the character yawning i need to get some sleep so we'll do that quickly should have done that before taking the job really but we've still got oh i forgot about that damage ah oh, that's fine doesn't really matter i have actually got to go and pick the job up before we can do the thing so let's get it moving Right, so we want that off. And we want this. Yeah, those lights on. Oh, turned that a bit too fast. Right, I'm going to go left here. Oh dear, there's a bit more broken scenery over there. Some floating trees. And I should probably get on the right side of the road, to be honest. That may help me to not die. <laughs> Generally speaking, not dying is something I enjoy. Right, uh, just over the other side of this interstate road. Or... Highway, whatever you want to call it. Don't know if you can hear that, but some outsiders being very loud with their music. Mm -hmm. Nice bus. Ooh, W nine hundred. I really want to get one of them. That's going to be my next truck when I take that big loan, probably. I'll give this to one of my other drivers and I'll get the big W900. Yo, whoa, what are you doing? You might be allowed to turn right on a red, but you've also got to wait to make sure it's clear. Big old truck coming at you then, moron. Don't dawdle in front of me now. Come on, boy. Get moving. Awesome, discovered a recruitment agency. I do like discovery. I should probably do a bit more discovery before and after I do deliveries. It would make more sense to do that. Find the stuff that's actually in these towns, like dealerships and uh, ice cream vans, apparently. Shame we can't turn left on a red. So the brake sensitivity is set really high. Really feels like it. I might have to turn that down a bit. Though with this big old trailer, actually, I think I might want to turn it up. I think I had it turned up because that last trailer I had, the ridiculously oversized one, was um, was causing me some issues braking. And again, this one's probably going to be quite oversized. I still haven't had a... Uh, um, I can't go this way. Game. Ah, there it is. Okay, well, there's no point driving in there. Yeah, I still haven't had a, a Waybridge when I've had one of these oversized trailers yet. I don't know why I'm looking that way. I could just look out the back window. <laughs> it's probably cheating, but... Ah, oh well. Oops. Right, let's uh, do enter. Journey. Yep, we want to take that. Cam loops to Calgary. It's got to be there Saturday 11 a.m. and sa between Saturday 11 a.m. and Saturday 5 p.m. And in game, we're currently on Friday. So 
So, destination, 14 tons, that's not bad. Expected on Saturday, it's... Remains is 29, 28 hours. ETS Friday, okay, so we, we should be there in time, basically. Yeah, fine, okay, cool. Kind of helps if you take the parking brake off. Usually. All attached. All aboard. It's a nice boat. It's a very nice boat. I should be okay with it. I don't think it's as big as the uh, other trailer was. No, it's definitely not. It's called Queen. Good music. <laughs> so, big old yacht. Let's get moving. Probably still going to struggle a little bit in places, but I think it should be okay. <laughs> it's not too heavy. You actually saw one of these being um, being delivered. Um, wasn't quite this big. Actually, no, it was bigger than that. Yeah, it was one of the sort of the um, the houseboat sized yachts. It was a bit bigger than this. Ah, uh, it was still green. But um, I saw it being delivered to uh, to a marina near where I live when I was out for the day with the other half. And um, this truck just sort of pulled up and it backed up and it was... It's quite tight-knit where, the, uh, where the, the dock sort of side is and this big-ass truck had to weave around all these parked cars and through this, like, little, this little bay to back into the actual um, boatyard. It was pretty fun to watch. I mean, that was some epic truck driving right there. And then they um, they brought the mobile crane thing over. It, it like drives itself. It's the the big stanchion crane that lifts the boat up and drops it into the water. And uh, I lifted it up, and dropped it in, watched the whole thing. It was pretty interesting actually to see how it's all done, and and definitely to watch that truck driver and his mad skills at backing up I was definitely impressed he'd definitely be good at this game for some of the uh, the hard parks and wow not as heavy as the last trailer but still struggling with these hills I didn't realise Canada was so hilly except for the places that are known to be mountainous I thought it was a fairly flat place I just didn't realise it was it was this steep Come on, truck. Mm -hmm. You can do it. Oh, at least we're not speeding. <laughs> Vancouver, Prince George. Oh, heading in the right direction. That is a big old rock right there. That's almost like um, Table Mountain or Ayers Rock. Where it's all just quite flat around it and you just come up to it and it's just this big piece of land that's just suddenly there. That's pretty cool. Right, we want to be coming off here? Yeah, you can wait, mate. Keep as much speed up as I can while not going too fast around this fairly tight bend. Certainly don't want to tip over. Not sure if my insurance will cover the millions that this yacht is worth. Clear, so we can pull out. Beautiful. Now it's just a long haul all the way there. We've got... What have we got? That's the wrong button. That's what I wanted. That's the also the one I wanted. So we've got... 501 miles, 13 hours. We'll be there Saturday, 3 a.m. So we're still within time. So yeah, not too bad. And it's a nice day. Kind of cloudy, but a nice day. 
Ugh, Prius. <laughs> Some good scenery too. And this map, uh, this is the um, Mex Mex Can Me the Mexus Can, Mexico, U.S., Canada, Mexus Can. It's called. I know, complicated name, much. But uh, yeah, this one's being worked on as well. I think fairly regularly, not like really regularly, but fairly regularly. So uh, he's adding more bits to it, doing the bug fixes where they need to be done. I think it's just one or a couple of guys that are doing this map. But it's a pretty good map, I and mean, it adds a lot to it. And there's only a couple of little bits here and there that don't quite line up, which, you know, when when you're building something this big, it's bound to happen. It's just life, you know. You can't always get it completely perfect. Even the the more professional map makers like Pro Mods, whenever you see a, a beta version of, of the new Pro Mods map, there's bound to be two or three little bugs that you spot within the first couple of hours of driving on it. And they're not normally massive things. Though with Pro Mods it's usually invisible walls. That's that's the usual thing for them. Scenery wise, you don't tend to find gaps or problems with the scenery. It's just literally invisible walls. Almost everywhere. You just be driving along and then whack. Ah, can't go that way. And if you haven't got the console turned on, the developer console, so that you can't teleport past it, then you're pretty screwed. Because there is usually no way of getting around them. Unfortunately. But they're pre usually pretty quick at, at releasing a patch as well. If they know it's a serious one. If it's a major problem. Oh, sorry, Van. I don't think I actually hit him. I did cut into his lane quite badly though. It is a little bit more sensitive on ATS. It's not as bad, but it's it's not like the other controller. I think I'm going to have to mess with it. Oh my god. I felt like it was going to tip then. I'm only doing 63. But, um... Yeah, the, uh... It's, as I said, it's a it's a good map. It's a lot of fun. And it's definitely added some more driving distance for me. I know I, I hadn't really done much of the standard map in this profile, but I have driven the entire map already in other profiles private profiles and I just I didn't want to be doing back and forth between the same boring states which is why I got the extra mappage and uh, yeah it's all good and these uh, these map uh, map packs these trailer packs that I've got now as well they've added a lot of interesting trailers so we're getting some really diverse loads and some interesting places to take them to we've got 80 still doing 65 Am I actually going to have to... Yeah, I'm going to have to overtake this cop. Okay, don't hit the cop. Ha, <laughs> overtook the cop. Oh, yeah. Who's the boss? That's me. Alright, can I pull back in? Better indicate. Oh, dear. Looks like a truck couldn't find a load. I've got to find... It. And there's another one in front. I must find out which trailer it is. I don't know if it's a pack, or if it's just two of the trailer packs I've got. Maybe getting in each other's way and making one of the replacements not show up properly because some of them are replacements and some of them are actual full add-ons that you bring a whole new thing in and uh, you know, I must find out which it is that's broken it's not a major issue most trucks are finding trailers it just seems to be the odd one here and there. Why did you pull in and then just pull straight back out? There's not even anyone in your lane in front of you for ages. Are any of these vehicles driving in the slow lane? Because if they're not, then... Oh no, yeah, that truck behind me is. Just the AI being weird then. Ah, well, but there's um, a massive new patch that's due out soon, I think, for both ATS and ETS2, which is going to be... Or is it just ATS? It might be just ATS. But it's it's a massive bug fix slash um, code clear-up, and they're doing ma major changes to the 
underlying code of the game again most of which have to do with the AI some massive changes to the AI to make them run better which to be fair uh, the years of trolly AI in ETS2 and the different levels of patching that they did in, e in ETS2 from like day one release up to where we are now the AI got worse it started off bad, then got worse, then got better, then got worse, then got better, then got progressively worse. And then they did that massive update that was just a whole new uh, AI code. And the AI suddenly got really good, and it was perfect. But then they had to release a couple of bug fixes a couple of weeks after that, and it just broke the AI again. And every time they do a specific AI fix, they then release other updates that bring new stuff or other bug fixes and other patches and stuff. And all of that inevitably just slowly breaks the AI again. So I think they've just given up on fundamentally fixing the AI. Because then the next time they release a patch, it's just going to break again. But whatever this update that's coming out is, it's going to be multiple fixes for multiple things. But AI, I think, is going to be one of the big ones. And, um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see if it's going to break again straight away. But the AI in this aren't too bad. I mean, compared to how they were when ETS 2 came out, the ATS AI is, is miles better. At least it actually drives properly. It still does the occasional weird thing, but it's occasional. It doesn't just constantly try and drive into you and mess you up, which is nice. Another one with no trailer? <clears throat> I suppose it is kind of uh, adds a bit more realism, because you do get... Uh, trucks without trailers in real life when they're just moving from one place to another or just driving or whatever it does happen but um, it's just it's not even that rare to be honest because the amount of trucks that are on the roads in America it's not exactly a rare thing to see it's just it's, you you more commonly find a truck with a trailer attached come on hurry up and go past me I need to pull out hurry up Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's just more common to find a truck that has a trailer. So, occasionally seeing a truck without a trailer in this, I suppose is still quite real life realistic. Hello, cops. Oh, that's tighter than I thought it was. Oh, God. Well, we're doing well. We're making progress. Let's see what we're like journey-wise. Oh, dear. I did not see that we were running low on fuel. So, 201 miles to go. Five hours left. Let's, um... We're doing six miles to the gallon. Seven miles to the gallon. Okay. Our fuel is 19 gallons. Well, hopefully we can make it. What did I have it on before? I think it was that screen. <clears throat> we should be alright. Hopefully there's a... Uh, a fuel stop somewhere shortly. I mean, we're... We're not revving high. We're doing about a normal rev. We're in our highest gear, so... It is, I am, um, I do have a small engine that's having to work extra hard to pull this heavy load. And I don't have any more gears to use. I could slow down a bit. But then, it's always a case of when you slow down, like the faster you go, yeah, you're using more fuel, but you're getting there faster. So if you turn that around and you slow down, so you're getting there slower, but you're, you're going, you're going slower, thereby using less fuel. Do they equal each other? Is one better than the other? Is it better to go faster and use more fuel but get there quicker? Or is it better to to get there slower but use less fuel? You know? Which way around is more efficient? And look at that sunset in the background. As I go around this curve, I'm going to try and get a good picture that has the sunset in the background. Just whacked the mic. Right, let's see what we can do with that. The mouse wants to move. There we go. 
Now, normally I would use the lit up side. But I want to get that sunset in. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Look at those rays. Oh, I love it. Let's get that focusing in. Look at that. That looks brilliant. And it's just coming up over those trees. Absolutely brilliant. I do love a nice bit of uh, scenery. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So, uh, we're running into the night time now. Not too long to go. Let's check how much heat's coming out of my PC. I don't know if you saw Monday's Minecraft episode where I explained the problems I've been having over the weekend with my PC uh, overheating. If you do, uh, if you haven't, I suggest you go and check it out. It's right at the end I talk about it. I don't want to keep going over it. But it, uh, it, and if you're watching this well after the, the day it was released, then um, it was episode 9 of Minecraft at the end. Not a massive issue, just a bit of overheating that's, that's causing some problems. Oh dear. I'm actually out of... What? I used those, those 19 gallons that quickly? No way. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, that's an issue. Um, you, the 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 problem with the PC is that it's just keeps overheating and crashing, and it, it it's just being basically weird. Well, we're nearly there, and this was the only fuel stop. Okay, guy who makes Mexus can add more fuel stops in. There's just nothing between these cities. Look down these main roads here, but on this road, wasn't a single fuel stop, and I've still got. Loads of distance to go. Well, that's not good. I suppose I could remember my position. Quickly teleport to a fuel stop. Then teleport back to finish the drive. Unfortunately, it's that or it's... Um, I should put it in neutral. Otherwise, the engine gearing is going to... Slow us right down. There you go. 29 miles an hour. Well, that's not good. That's really not good. That's kind of left me up the creek without a paddle, as it were. And there is literally no way of me getting fuel now. I'm pretty much just going to have to do the rest of this journey at... Why well, actually picking up speed at 30 miles an hour? I've still got an hour and 50 minutes left, though. 70 miles. There's no way I can coast for 70 miles. That's just not possible. I really wish I'd have fueled up before leaving. I just didn't realise, and I didn't realise there was going to be no fuel stops between... between the areas. I mean, I was really expecting some kind of fuel. Oh, this is going to be a big hill here. Yeah, I was expecting some kind of refueling station along the way somewhere. Well, about to start going uphill. I doubt I'm going to make it. <clears throat> well, this is quite a disaster. Come on, you can do it. We're nearly there. Look, it's right there. It's actually on the map. Oh, if I can coast this whole thing, I'm going to be... So impressed with myself. King of the coasters. It's a lot of uphill though. It's kind of leveling off a bit, but then it goes up a little bit. I mean, that's, that is Calgary right there. I'm looking at it. That is the city. If I can do this... I don't see how I'm going to do this, but if I can do this... Oh, come on, don't lose too much speed, please. You can do it. I won't even turn over. Should have a reserve. Come on. 
please. I'm not going to make it up here. I'm losing too much speed. Having all that weight was good going downhill because it, it gave me extra momentum, but going uphill, it's really anchoring me down. Better pull over. Make slight adjustments. Too many big adjustments and it'll ruin all my speed. I think I'd have been, sh not struggling up here, but I'd have been slow going up here even with um, power. Oh, I was really looking forward to Look how hot uphill it's going. There's no way I'm going to make this. I was really looking forward to that. Well, what I can do, I guess... going to seem a bit strange to you guys. I mean, I can either just teleport to a fuel stop, stop and then, you know, just like then just drive to the f destination and then I'll see it. I mean, I'm, I'm not that far anyway. I'm just there. If I teleport to the fuel stop, it's there. I'm not move, losing out much of the journey. Though I would like to complete the whole journey. Or... I could teleport to the fuel stop, get some fuel, then teleport back. Like, literally just a tiny bit of fuel. Teleport back. Drive into the town. <clears throat> deliver the load, get some more fuel, and then park up. Just so that I'm basically just jumping over here to grab a bit of fuel so I can finish the journey how I was going to finish it. I think that's going to be the best bet. But, let's detach the trailer. And then let's go... Like so. Yep, this is the turn off here. So this is the town. And the fuel stock would be... Where was the fuel stock? Is that it? No, that's not it. Why is that on that weird screen? Oh, it's down there. There it is. Right, so if I quickly teleport here... Oh, it kind of would help if I put myself on the thing like an idiot. I didn't do that. There we go. Right, let's just put a tiny bit of fuel in for now. Just enough to get me there. That'll do. Right, that's the fuel paid for. Then we can zoom back. Kind of helps if you put the brake on. to the trailer which is okay where's my trailer gone I think it's attached to me still I swear I detached it okay well I think I was at this bend wasn't I was I at this bend and I could definitely see the city I think it was by this sign Let's slow that movement down. Right, so it's not really cheating, because I've come back. So I think I was here. Yeah, it is still attached. Weird. I guess you can't teleport without it. Right, but we're all good now. So that can go off. I'm going to need my actual headlights. Let's get moving. So I give myself only a tiny bit of fuel, just to get there. And then we should be all good. I can't believe I ran out. What a kerfuffle. Terrible. Uh, can I pull in, please? Thank you. Let's get rid of that. But we got it sorted. We're on the way. We're on the move. Not far to go now either. 
So we're all good. Just down here. And then around this bend and then into the city. It's a pretty nice roundabout. I can't wait to see some of the new prefabs they're building for Arizona. They've, instead of just using the same old tired prefabs that they've been using for all of this, they're, they're trying to go really unique now, which is why it's taken so long, by the way, we finally found out. The, um, they've, instead of just using the same stuff they used to build uh, the first two states, they've decided that for Arizona, they're going to go all new. So they've built all new prefabs, basically like when they were building Scandinavia for ETS2. All new like road signs and road markings. Like, uh, all of their road prefabs are now in smaller sections so they can cut more stuff together to make it more unique and more, more, I guess, perfect. And a lot more real life realistic so that it looks like how Arizona really looks. And then we're doing a lot more work on the Grand Canyon, trying to get the viewpoint right so that it fits in with the rest of the game map and the sort of size parameters for driving. What are you doing? Just go around the damn corner. So it's all been a lot of hard work for them. I mean, I kind of figured that they were being perfectionists about it and that's what was taking so long, but it was just annoying because it's like there's no update. You, you just hear nothing. And I hate when developers do that. You, you kind of know in your heart, yeah, they're perfectionists, they're taking their time with it because they're trying to get it to look good. But it'd be nice if they could just release a statement every, occasionally saying, don't worry guys, we're on it, we're doing this, we're doing that. Ooh. We're getting there. Yeah, I know you're tired, you can wait. Look at these nice little houses. I feel sorry for all these people having trucks driving in and out every now and then. I do like that he's put this big old cityscape all around the edges. So it's not just the little drivable town. My right away. I'm going first. Me first, me first. <laughs> it's not just the, the drivable town that you can drive through, but then you've got all these nice skyscrapers around the edges and houses and buildings and things. Which is really good. It does add an extra degree of realism. So, just coming up to the delivery point. There's the fuel station that we went to. So it should be down here. Don't quite know why a... Um, what I'm guessing is like a farmer's merchant. For farm vehicles and equipment. I don't quite know why they want a yacht. But okay, you know, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, <laughs> quite literally. Uh, where do you need it? Yeah, you want it over there? That's fine. We should be able to do that. Just going to have to swing it right round and then back it on up. So I've been going next to the barn on the last few. It's the first time in ages I've actually backed it into the barn. The thing is that you can't... The way that they set it up, you can't actually back right into the barn then pull forwards and straighten up. All your manoeuvres have to be, like, out here. Which is fun. We'll try and get that in tight. So I don't hit that power pole. And then what I want to do is, as the back starts to go into the barn, that's where I'm going to try and straighten up. And turn it in. Gonna need to see that mirror. Not sure when the precise moment for turning is. Can't really see much. Just gonna have to guess on this, I think. Right, back of the trailer's about there. It's where those two white dots are. So let's try that. Oh, yeah, I think I've overcocked it. Left it just slightly too late. That's a good position now to move the rest in. Yeah, I know you're tired. Stop yawning at me. Oh, 
Oh, I think I've just clipped the wall. <laughs> Didn't realise I was that far over. Come on. Why is he not going in? Right. That really should be good. It needs to go right more. Okay, let's pull it out and just swing around again. I didn't expect it to be a perfect run. I have been getting some pretty good... Um, Perfect parkings, but I guess not this time. Right, let's back that round and straighten it up. And it should be in. Done. Beautiful. Perfect. It's in there. And we're on time? Yes, we're on time. Excellent. Extra XP. Extra cash. Doing good. That's giving us quite a bit as well. So that was really good. I like that. It was a good little journey. It wasn't too long. It was a fun delivery. Had its um, its ups and its downs. And they've got a new yacht. Why they need a yacht, I have no clue. But they've got a new yacht. So let's quickly pull around the corner and um, fill up the truck. And then go find a rest spot as he's yawning again. Already. When even that long a drive. Ooh. Yeah, alright, you're tired, I get it. Stopped a little bit soon there. Right, let's do that, and then that, and then engine off and fill up. 41 grand in the bank, so we're doing quite well on cash. That seems cheap. I guess we've only got small fuel tanks. Right, let's get around to that rest spot then. <clears throat> so yeah, that was a, a good little delivery. Weren't too bad. Wasn't any map issues. Just uh, the fuel issue. <laughs> and we've discovered Calgary. Which opens up more of the world to us. All the time we're discovering more stuff and making great progress. And it's not just nice to have these nice little relaxing drives and little chats about stuff. It's uh, it's almost like um, a blog video when I do ATS. Because I can just talk about things that are going on in the world. Like my PC issues. What's going on with the game, plans I have, things like that. Just wake up all the people that are trying to sleep in the motel. Put the side lights on. Engine off. Get that rest done. Nice. So yeah, um, I'm, I'm really enjoying this series and I hope you guys still are. It, it's a lot of fun, it's quite relaxing. Makes me feel tired every time I do them. This game, well, and ETS2, has always had quite a relaxing uh, sort of effect on me. It's always made me feel quite tired. It's, if I've ever had trouble sleeping, it's always a game you can just go and play for a... Just do a long old drive, and by the time you're done, you're just ready to fall asleep. But uh, I, yeah, I will be adding some, uh, some truck upgrades soon, as we start to sort of head towards the ranks where we can start to unlock things. Like beacons and horns and lights and silly things like that. And, um, 
and then just, just generally some other things. Maybe even when I take that loan and look towards buying some trucks, I might add some modded trucks into the game. Though I don't like to do that too much, because if I bring a modded truck in, then that mod gets discontinued, then it's kind of it's stuck in my fleet, and I've got to d sell it to, and then try and replace it. And So maybe when I'm a bit more well-off with the money, then it won't be an issue. But it's all stuff to look forward to. So, uh, yeah. But as for me, I'm going to leave it there. I don't know what I what will be going out tomorrow yet. Tomorrow being Thursday. Thursday and Friday should be something interesting. Um, I'm not sure what I've got for my... Like they're, be, they're being my two new game days. Sometimes I play other games, like Jalopy. Sometimes I'll bring you brand new games. So I'll just have to see what I find. See what's interesting for you guys. But... Um, other than that, Saturday, I'm not sure. I may bring back Stranded Deep on Saturday. Possibly. Possibly. It depends how I feel about that game. So, And if there's any new updates to it as well. So until then, um, I will see you all guys all on the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and bye-bye.